Humanity tried to prevent the impending ecological crisis by investing massively in genetic technology, but failed. Engineered viruses and organisms escaped into the wild and wiped out edible plants, animals, and large populations of humans. An oligarchy now thrives in enclosed cities called citadels, while everyone else struggles to survive. For food, people rely on seeds traded by the citadels. However, these are coded to produce only one harvest. In such desolate times, Vesper is a young girl who lives outside the citadel, relying on what little food she can forage to fill her and her paralyzed father's bellies. The world is covered with strange plants, and not all of them are harmless. Today, too, she returns home with an edible plant and gets right onto making a nourishing liquid for her father, Darius. He is completely paralyzed and depends on an artificial respirator machine to sustain his life, but he can pilot a very adorable drone with his mind to communicate with Vesper and follow her around. After giving her father the liquid, she goes to the old lab where she conducts her various experiments along with Darius's drone. Darius thinks that it is a waste of time, but that does not discourage Vesper. She is completely self-taught, so she believes she is smart enough to gain something out of her experiments. Immersed in the research, they suddenly hear a noise coming from outside. They quickly gather all their things and escape out to see a woman collecting scrap metal. People like her are called pilgrims. They are usually harmless and go around place to place, collecting scraps of metal for unknown reasons. Vesper's mother also followed the pilgrims after abandoning them, so Darius is not very fond of their kind. On the way home, they find that the plants in front of their house has been killed. Sensing danger, the two of them rush into the house to catch the intruder, but there was no one inside. But it is too soon to be relieved as they shortly discover that their generator is now broken. Vesper hurriedly moves to fix it, but the bacteria that is used to power the generator are all dead, and she needs to find a replacement quickly. With Darius barely holding on to his life without his respirator machine and his drone dead without battery, Vesper does not think twice before rushing to her uncle for help. Her uncle, Jonas, runs an orphanage a little further away from her home. He feeds the children by trading their blood to the citadel in exchange for seeds. When Vesper reaches the orphanage, there are children gathered together as they watch a jug struggling on the ground. Jugs are artificially created creatures that are made to serve humans, and no one feels any sympathy for the creature. Soon, Jonas also comes out of the building in orders for the child in charge of the jug to put it out of its misery. It is a shame to kill such an expensive creature, but it is already gravely injured. Jonas sees his niece among the crowd of children. She walks up to him, frankly making her demands, and goes straight inside her room to extract her blood without giving him the chance to make small talk. A pint of her blood, in exchange for the bacteria to run her generator, is not a bad deal for him, but Jonas has never been an honest man. After giving her blood, Vesper asks for the bacteria, but Jonas tells her to come back in a few days after he sells her blood to the Citadel. Vesper knows him well enough to realize that he has deceived her, and she dives to take back the bag of her blood, but Jonas is stronger than her and drags her out of the building before throwing her to the ground. With the children of the orphanage chasing her, she has no choice but to flee, but she does not go too far. She stakes out for a chance to sneak into the orphanage and then steals the bacteria in a glass jar. When she turns around to leave, she sees the room which is used for germinating seeds. Many seeds have already sprouted, but she digs out the ones that haven't and steals them for herself. As soon as she gets back home, she fixes up the generator, letting her father finally breathe comfortably. He knows that stealing the bacteria was out of necessity, but he is against Vesper stealing the seeds. They are very precious, so he orders her to quickly return them before Jonas finds out they are missing. Vesper does not agree. She wants to experiment on them and unlock the code on the seeds that would make them fertile. If she is successful, she can showcase her talents to the Citadel and they would definitely want to hire her. 
Darius believes that her dreams will cause her great misery as he has already worked in the army for the Citadel, but was thrown out after he became paralyzed while fighting for them. He knows how cruel they can be. The next day, while foraging as usual, Vesper finds an injured young woman from the Citadel surrounded by carnivorous plants. She carries her back home to nurse her injuries. Darius believes that the woman is not their responsibility and wants Vesper to throw her out, but Vesper disagrees. She hopes to get rewarded by the woman in exchange for helping her. While they are arguing, the woman wakes up to find herself inside an unfamiliar room. She silently tries to survey her surroundings, but her injuries cause her to fall to the floor with a bang, alerting Vesper and Darius to come into the room. Finding that Vesper looks harmless, she then begs her to go find her father, who was in the glider with her before it crashed. She introduces herself as Camellia and promises to reward Vesper for all the help she gives her. Ignoring her father's warning, she agrees to go on a search tomorrow morning. For now, Vesper tells Camellia to rest and heads into the kitchen to prepare dinner. Right after she hands Camellia a bowl of food, Darius starts shaking. The time without the respiratory machine has taken a toll on his body, which causes a violent seizure. Vesper rushes to his side, but she has no idea how to help him. She can only beg desperately for the seizure to stop and not take away his life. While his situation is getting worse, Camellia steps in, magically puts on lipstick, and gives him a kiss. The seizure instantly stops as Darius falls into a peaceful slumber, and it is Camellia who grows tired. Early next morning, Vesper and Darius's drone head out to find Camellia's father. Following the trail of debris, they are able to find him inside a pod. He is heavily injured but still alive, so Vesper wants to get him out quickly in order to save his life. But before she could help him, Jonas arrives at the scene with his group of children. He gets closer to examine the man. Although he fears the people from the Citadel, he is also hateful of them. So he takes this chance to vent his anger and suffocates the man to death. Vesper tries her best to stop him, desperately attempting to push Jonas away, but this time again, he easily overpowers her. Not only does he kill the man, he also manages to find out there was another passenger inside the aircraft. Vesper dejectedly walks back home and lies to Camellia about not being able to find her father. Jonas is already out looking for her. It won't do any good if she acts rashly after hearing of her father's death. Darius changes the subject and tells Camellia that Vesper would contact the Citadel through Jonas's transceiver tomorrow. Camellia agrees, but she seems a little hesitant. During their conversation, Vesper takes notice of her legs that have surprisingly healed just after a day. Seeing as Camellia can walk now, Vesper takes her out to the greenhouse at night to show the results of her experiments. She needs to know what Vesper is capable of so that she can give her a good position at the Citadel. The greenhouse is filled with majestic plants that leave Camellia in awe. Even her father, who is the head of synthetic biology at the Citadel, would be impressed by Vesper's creations. That night, Vesper and Camellia feel themselves growing closer together. Vesper takes out an instrument that belonged to her mother and shows it to Camellia. Her mother loved making music and would often sing for her before she left. While Camellia plays a tune, Vesper joins in to hum a melody that her mother used to sing. The next morning, Vesper sneaks into Jonas's orphanage to use the transceiver with Darius, who flies ahead to survey the area. But in the blink of an eye, the drone is caught by Jonas, who brings it inside the greenhouse and takes it apart. When Vesper steps into the greenhouse, he claims to be fixing the drone. Jonas is not straightforward with his words and still speaks gently, but Vesper can tell that he has found out about her stealing the seeds and also about her housing Camellia. When Jonas is distracted, Vesper quickly grabs the opportunity to flee with the drone. Jonas does not chase after her, instead he sends out a few children on her tail. Soon they are able to catch her and hold her down to sear a mark at the back of her hand, the long lost symbol of Elon Musk's profile picture. After they finish their objective, the children leave without causing her further troubles. 
Vesper returns home completely agitated. Jonas did something to the drone which has made it faulty and unable to fly. It is the only way she is able to communicate with her father, so Vesper is distressed to fix it. In her miserable state, she reveals to Camellia that her father is dead and takes her to see his dead body. Camellia is heartbroken. She screams and cries, but there is nothing that can bring him back. While Vesper tries to calm her down, she notices the unnatural behavior of Camellia's skin on the back of her neck. Vesper comes to a realization that any other audience has already suspected by now that Camellia is a jug. Creating an intelligent jug is a major crime, so Camellia and her father were on the run. She never intended to take Vesper to the Citadel to begin with. Vesper is rightfully angry and takes her frustration out on Camellia, but even so, she still brings her back home. While Vesper goes on to fix Darius's drone, Camellia kneels on the floor in another room. Jugs live only to serve their masters, and with her father now gone, she cannot bear to keep on living. As she raises a knife to kill herself, Vesper bursts into the room and wrestles away the knife. This time, she is the stronger person, and she convinces Camellia to stay alive. Knowing that she needs a distraction, Vesper takes her to the lab at her house and asks for her DNA sample to conduct experiments on the seeds she stole from Jonas. Vesper spends the entire day engrossed in studying and experimenting without any result. At night, Camellia comes in with an instrument to help Vesper concentrate. When she plays a melody, an idea strikes Vesper and she quickly arranges the samples to the tune. To her utter surprise, Vesper makes a breakthrough. She has found a way to unlock the seeds to make them fertile. The next morning, Jonas arrives at their house unannounced. He wants to send Camellia back to the Citadel. He is very respectful and polite to her, but his entire demeanor changes when he finds out that she is a jug. He slams her down at the table to capture her, but thankfully, Vesper arrives at the scene to help her. The two of them struggle against Jonas and ultimately manage to subdue him, but Vesper does not want to kill him. She strikes a deal. She will share the fertile seeds with him, and he must leave them alone. Jonas agrees for the time being, but as soon as he gets back to his place, he immediately informs the Citadel of Camellia's whereabouts. That night, a strange bacteria spreads into Vesper's house before disappearing into the air. It is used by the Citadel army to track people's location so they know that Jonas has betrayed them. Darius tells Vesper to quickly leave with Camellia, but she is not willing to do so. She cannot run away and leave her father behind, but Darius manages to convince the two women to flee. Shortly after, the soldiers from the Citadel arrive at Jonas's house. His big brain move resulted in his big brain splattered all over his porch. The soldiers then move to find Camellia, but Darius is the only one inside the house. He flies the drone to where the generator is, and an attack on it blows up the entire house. He does this to buy time for Vesper and Camellia. But it has the opposite effect. Vesper is distraught to see the explosion and wants to rush back in to save her father, but Camellia holds her back. They start running away again, but the soldiers are hot on their heels. Somehow they manage to get rid of the soldiers pursuing them, but Camellia soon realizes that they won't stop coming after them until they find her. She wants to surrender herself to give Vesper a chance to survive. Vesper begs her to stay together with her, but Camellia is determined. She gives Vesper a kiss and puts her to sleep before surrendering herself to the soldiers. The next morning, Vesper wakes up alone in the middle of the forest. As she defeatedly walks to her burned down house, she starts burying the altered seeds into the ground, believing that there's no use of them in a world without her loved ones. A small group of Jonas's kids find her at that time, which makes Vesper change her mind, and she decides to go on a journey with them. They follow the pilgrims to a large makeshift tower that they have built. Step by step, Vesper climbs to the top of the tower and is able to see the wider world around her. Finally, she takes out the seeds and lets the winds scatter them. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.